Hey, it's Dr. Charles, a.k.a. Coach MD. In my over 30 years of medical practice, I made it my goal to help you create a strong mind, a healthy body, and an unshakable spirit. In this video today, we're going to talk about what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, it's very interesting. A lot of things we do in life, we do them just enough. It's good for us, but if we do it too much, it could be harmful. Exercise is a perfect example of that. So let's take a look at this video and I'll give you my thoughts as we go along. Inside your kitchen, there's poison lurking. Every day, millions of Americans are unknowingly eating food with toxic ingredients. <laughs> ingredients like pyridoxine, which can cause a loss of muscle control and make it difficult to walk. Or filoquinone, which can cause brain damage in infants or cola calciferol, which is actually used as a rat poison. How are these kinds of toxins ever allowed into our food supply? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. All those terrifyingly named ingredients are vitamins. And yes. Right, vitamin D, cola calciferol, paradoxine, vitamin B6, actually. Vitamin K is... Um, philoquinone and they're good for us in small doses but they all can actually be toxic and yet all this stuff is totally safe to eat which should leave you with some questions Let's be honest, America hasn't always been the healthiest place. There used to be lead in our gasoline. No one wore sunscreen. Everybody used to smoke. No, seriously, even camels used to smoke. Yeah, and even doctors. You've probably seen those Marlboro uh, commercials or camel commercials where the doctor says, I only smoke camels. True story. Smoke. Don't ask, it was a weird time. But these days, Americans are kind of obsessed with our health. And we're doing pretty well, especially by historical standards. Between 1960 and 2015, Americans' life expectancy increased by almost 10 years. Death rates from cancer, they're falling. Death rates from strokes, they're falling. Death rates from cardiovascular disease, they're falling. And yet there's a weird irony here. At the same time that we're enjoying longer and healthier lives, we've never been more concerned that we're being poisoned by... Right, so that's a good point. Um, but the reasons why we're living longer and the reasons why uh, we might be having decreased risk of certain diseases, it's multifactorial. But what this is getting, on, getting at is a phenomenon called the hormetic effect and the hormetic effect means that as we get small doses of of certain uh, habits maybe of certain uh, medications or, or certain um, herbs for instance uh, they can actually make us better so for instance homeopathy homeopathy is giving you small doses of what you may be toxic may be toxic to you or small doses of what you might be allergic to uh, and that's the same concept with allergy shots it gives you a small dose of it so your body gets used to gets used to it and can actually uh, mount some type of response to it and similarly with exercise as we exercise we're actually uh, stressing ourselves, stressing our body. And by stressing our bodies in a controlled setting, it could make us more apt to be healthy, uh, healthier, it, uh, it put us in a better position to be have a healthier response to stress. Or when we're breaking down muscle, but when we're lifting weights, we're only, we're actually hurting, injuring, inflaming our muscles. But by doing that, we're making them stronger. So this is a very interesting concept, and it goes a, a lot what they're going to talk about with, with toxins. Pretty much everything. The food supply, the pharmaceutical industry, cell phones, deodorant, chopsticks. <laughs> it seems like everywhere you turn, someone is claiming something you use every day is going to kill you. It's all terrifying. 
and more than a little confusing. Mm, After all, who can you actually trust? Well, allow us to nominate at least one candidate. This old dead Swiss guy. This is Paracelsus, a 16th... Okay, we're gonna talk about Paracelsus in a second, but I'm gonna answer this question, who can you trust? Well, it's a little self-promotion. I am going to be starting a podcast, the Coach MD podcast, and we're gonna be talking about a lot of different issues, and I want you to feel that you can trust me. And if you don't, I wanna hear from you. And in the meantime, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and let me know what you think. Let me know some of the things that you might do in your life that you might think uh, is making you stronger. Little bits of what won't kill you may make you stronger. So let's see what Paracelsus says about it. Century doctor who was one of the pioneers of the use of chemistry in medicine. And perhaps his most famous contribution to science is a phrase that can help us navigate a lot of these fears. The dose makes the poison. Now, what Paracelsus meant by that is that while we tend to think of substances as either safe or harmful, almost everything is actually both, mm. depending on how much of it we're exposed to. For instance, as health risks go, you're probably not that worried about black licorice. And if you eat it in normal amounts, you don't need to be. But in 2020, a Massachusetts man suffered a fatal heart attack after eating at least a bag of the candy every day for a few weeks because it contains an ingredient that, at those enormous quantities, causes potassium levels to nosedive. Yeah, see, it, it, has a, it mimics aldosterone, which is a hormone which acts on the kidneys to help the body keep hold on to sodium and release potassium. So uh, in there's another, it, it's not something also black licorice and people who have high blood pressure may want to stay away from black licorice because by increasing the sodium, it increases your total body fluid load, which can increase your blood pressure. So um, a little bit of black licorice may be good and tasty and not bad for you, but eating a bag a day like this guy could actually kill you like it did with him, or it can raise your blood pressure. So this is another good example of what doesn't kill you can make you stronger, but in very small doses. Although I don't know how black licorice will make you stronger actually. <laughs> There's also nothing wrong with a little nutmeg, but a lot of nutmeg, mm. two to three tablespoons, can send your heart racing and cause hallucinations which could make Christmas a little weird. And believe it or not, even water can be toxic at excessive levels. Drink more than your kidneys can excrete and you'll be facing a condition called hyponatremia, which in the most extreme cases has even led to comas or death. Right, because that, that means a very low sodium in your blood. So that's the opposite of licorice, which can create uh, increased sodium being absorbed, this is your body is more diluted. And what that does is it causes brain swelling and that causes coma and death. And it has happened. There have been, uh, you, you may have read about them on, on different radio shows. There was one out west uh, a few years ago where they challenged somebody, to, it was a contest who could drink the most water and actually somebody died trying. But while the principle of the dose makes the poison might make us more cautious about things we otherwise regard as harmless, it also ought to calm our nerves about some of the things that freak everyone out. Take pesticides, for example. In 2018, 79% of Americans told pollsters they believed there was at least some health risk from pesticide exposure through fruits and vegetables. I'd be one of those 79%. That's one reason that so many people buy organic food despite the fact that it can cost over 50% more, which would probably make them disappointed to learn that contrary to popular belief, organics use pesticides too. But here's the good news, it doesn't matter because pesticides can be dangerous at high levels, mm -hmm. but those are not the levels in your grocery store. Not even close. However, okay, it's a cumulative effect the body may not excrete some of those pesticides, some of those toxins. They may be fat soluble, meaning they are held in fat tissue. So they may accumulate. So 
maybe not in in the small doses you may get in one sitting and one off of eating, but over time they may accumulate. So that's a key point, I think. Close. The EPA sets limits on how much pesticide residue can be on produce and sets them well below the level at which they pose any danger. And in 2021, over 99% of the country's produce came in under even those right. limits. Yes, but accumulated. In fact, nearly effect. a quarter of them had no pesticide residues at all. And food isn't the only issue where dosage really matters. Today, around half of Americans still think nuclear power is unsafe, usually because of concerns about radiation. Again, you can understand the concern. Radiation is dangerous at high levels of exposure. But what's a high level? Radiation is measured in units called millirems. The maximum amount of exposure people who work in the nuclear industry are allowed to have is about 5,000 millirems a year a level so safe that science can't detect any difference in their likelihood to develop cancer. The amount that people near Three Mile Island, the site of the only nuclear accident in American history, were exposed to? About one millirem, which is why there were no health effects. The amount you get from living near a nuclear power plant? About 0.01 millirem a year. To put that in perspective, you get about 29 millirems a year from the radiation naturally occurring in your own body. Americans are right to be... Right, so there's a couple of things here that are, that are a little bit not... Um, uh, that they're accurate, but there is noted that, again, cumulative radiation effect, and that's why getting x-rays or, or CAT scans, it's very important to, to want to get low dose uh, levels of radiation. It's been shown that people who have had multiple CAT scans uh, in a cumulative effect have a higher incidence of developing cancer. It's been shown. But the, the whole thing with nuclear energy that we worry about are the, the accidents, the nuclear accidents. On a whole, however, nuclear energy is very safe and there's very little radiation in a nuclear power plant that's released into the atmosphere or our exposure. So that's a whole other issue, um, environmental issue. It's actually a very clean energy. But, um, you know, as far as the exposure to radiation, that is a real risk. And that's a risk that all of us face and we can't limit it by certain things that we do. Uh, and one of those things is having some control over uh, the x-rays we're exposed to and having some knowledge about that. And these are some of the things that I'll be talking about in my podcast, definitely. Um, and I look forward to you tuning in and we can talk more about that. But let's listen to the rest of this. Vigilant about their health. But panicking without getting the facts can actually have the opposite effect. Opposition to nuclear power has actually led to us getting power from dirtier sources, like coal. And research has found that consumers who are worried about pesticides on their food just tend to buy fewer fruits and vegetables, mm. which is way worse for their health than exposure yeah. to minuscule amounts of pesticides. I agree. Luckily, we already have a good rule of... But again, it's the cumulative effect, and you want to clean uh, your, your produce, and organic does have less pesticides. They may have some, but much less. And again, it's a cumulative effect, which is, is the thing we have to be concerned about. Thumb. If you remember only one thing, let it be this. The dose makes the poison. And if you can remember a second thing, go easy on the nutmeg. <laughs> And I'm surprised they said, if you uh, remember a third thing, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which I'm going to ask you to do. It's a free way to support uh, my channel and also a like and comment on the video. Really appreciate that. Um, all of this is interesting because it goes with the idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's, again, I, I mentioned before, it's a, called the hormetic effect or hormesis. And we see that through exercise. We see that through uh, homeopathy. Um, some uh, immunology, like allergy testing, and it's important to keep that in mind. Also, another interesting idea is that medications that we get, a little pill, just think about that. We take a little pill, but it has such a profound impact on our body. So it, it does 
it does kind of make us think that a little bit of a toxin might also have an effect on our body, especially if it's stored in our body. So we still have to be vigilant about that. Um, so let me know what you think. I'd really be interested in hearing that. And until next time, I'm Dr. Charles, aka Coach MD, urging you to stay strong in mind, in body, and in soul. Bye for now.